hands are very important because if you think about it, practically everything you touch, eat, buy has been in a commercial vehicle at some point. So of course for manufacturers, vans are big business. They're needed for transportation for just about everything. The Transit has pretty much ruled the roost for the past whoa, four decades. It really has had a stronghold on the market, but now other manufacturers are starting to kick back. This is the new Citroen Dispatch, and it does just that. Now, to be fair, the old Dispatch wasn't a looker. It sort of looked like it had been kicked in the face a few times, but this new one adds a little bit of French style, which is something quite unusual in the van sector. Yes, we've had vans that are trying to look more car-like, but this actually has some flair to it. We've got the really broad grille that goes off into these headlights that wrap around the front of the vehicle. And proportionally, it looks pretty good. It's got this modern feel to the external design. Now, the Dispatch comes in all sorts of shapes and sizes with varying cabs and capacities and flatbeds, etc. But the panel van comes in three shapes and sizes, and this is the middle of the range. And in terms of specification, it's what I've lovingly dubbed Builder Spec because it has nothing on it. This is the bog standard, other than the metallic paint, there is no options on this van at all. And whilst that maybe doesn't give us the opportunity to talk about the new touchscreen infotainment display that's been incorporated in the higher specification models, it does allow us to review the van as somebody would actually buy it. Because in the real world, people are looking for a lot of space and some convenience, and that's about it. They don't necessarily want all the gadgets and gizmos in a van that you'd usually have in a car. So whilst we're on the subject of interior, in here there is plenty of space. It's three abreast, like a lot of vans, but there's loads of little storage, cubby holes under the seats. The dispatch gives you this high commanding driving position you can clearly see over the tallest of vehicles here. And these really quite comfortable seats. We've done uh, quite a few motorway miles in this, and it has to be said, the seats have proven ample for support and comfort. Whilst we're on the subject of comfort, the suspension in this van, I think is one of the best in its class. I think it could be the best riding van I've ever come across. And considering that the UK is just peppered with potholes, that's quite an important factor if you're gonna spend your entire working day in a van. It does come with some luxuries as standard, such as a DAB radio and USB ports to charge your phone. Obviously, being a van, what's behind this solid bulkhead is of great importance. Slide open either of the side doors, a very useful feature if you're making deliveries, and you'll find 5.3 cubic metres of space in this medium-sized van. All the panels have been boxed off quite nicely, meaning you're unlikely to do any damage to the interior of the vehicle carrying something that might slide about in the back. The obligatory double doors at the back are pretty useful for loading big, heavy items. There's a nice low load lip there, so you won't be putting your back out loading things into the rear. Under the bonnet of our test van is the 1.6 litre blue HDI diesel engine you may be familiar with in the rest of the car range from PSA. That's no bad thing at all because once underway it's actually relatively refined. It grumbles and gurgles a little bit under throttle and at low speeds, but generally speaking, once you're on the move, it's a relatively tranquil experience in here. There's actually not too much noise entering the cabin, which is rare for a van because usually all the noise at the back echoes around and funnels its way into the cabin, but here it's uh, nothing to write home about really. Said diesel engine produces 115 horsepower and 300 newton meters of torque, which makes it a really strong performing engine, particularly on the motorway. Power is sent to the front wheels via this six speed manual transmission. And I have to say, it's a good selection of ratios. I haven't found myself wanting this week at all. Whilst the dispatch does offer plenty of reassuring grip, the steering is a bit on the vague side and has a real lack of feel. And naturally, being a van, it does roll through the corners a little bit, but that is to be expected of such a tall vehicle. And of course, the trade for having that slightly cushier ride is that you have all of that comfort whenever you're going about, which I think is something that really is worth stressing because your average van man is going to spend, you know, almost all of his nine hours in this van. And to have a comfortable work environment is really, really key. Citroen claim that the all-new dispatch will do just over 55 mpg combined, which actually makes it a front runner in its class, and also emit just 137 grams per kilometre of CO2. The new dispatch is certainly a savvy choice, and it definitely makes life much more difficult for the likes of the Transit and the Mercedes Vito. At £17,915 starting, it's relatively good value too. Thanks very much for watching and let us know what you think in the comments below. 
please subscribe for all of the latest and greatest cars to hit the road. For breaking news and written reviews, visit www.insidelane.co.uk. Thank you.